Yeah, Keenan, for a couple of reasons, population being one of them, local political insiders are looking at Oakland County for an area that's likely to be shaken up a little bit by this redistricting. Another place they are watching, the two congressional districts that contain the city of Detroit. You may have noticed on a map, they're shaped a little strangely, and at least one political expert is guessing that could change. I think people in the Detroit area should expect a new map that doesn't look anything like the old map. Detroit's two black majority congressional districts are currently repped by Democrats, Rashida Tlaib in the 13th and Brenda Lawrence in the 14th district. We have to meet the requirements of the Voting Rights Act. Michigan has chosen in the past to do so uh, by creating these majority minority districts. There are other ways the commission could go. But if they follow suit, we will have to have these two majority minority districts. And new this redistricting, the Citizens Commission tasked with remapping is supposed to consider communities of interest, meaning groups of people that share cultural, historic or economic interests. But it's not supposed to give either party a leg up. It is up to the residents of Metro Detroit to tell us how do they see their community. My expectation is that it will be shy of a district, but not very much. So. If the city of Detroit were to be kept together, it's going to need another 50,000 or 100,000. Could a surrounding suburb join the city of Detroit? That's one possibility, as citizens and lawmakers are still waiting on final U.S. Census data. But, of course, that could have political implications. Because we're going from 14 districts to 13, you know, it, it's kind of like this game of musical chairs, which incumbent is going to be left standing when the music stops. Now somebody has got to um, probably run in an unfamiliar place. One place that could happen is Oakland County, says political science professor Dave Dulio. It's home to several Democratic House incumbents. In Oakland County, when you've got uh, a number of representatives, Representative Slotkin, Stevens, Levin, uh, you know, it's certainly possible that those two, that those three or two of the three get put into the same district and then would have to run against each other in a Democratic primary. Dulio expects Southeast Michigan is where we will lose that congressional seat. The UP and Northern Michigan likely to be impacted the least. Think of it as, a, as creating a jigsaw puzzle. The corners are going to be whatever they are, right? So they're not going to change the corners much. The things in the middle have a lot more room to change. Now, Julio expects those communities of interest will play a larger role in remapping the state's legislative districts, which, of course, are smaller. Now, the Citizens Commission, they are relying on people to attend public meetings and make their voices heard for how they'd like to see their districts mapped together. There are several public meetings in and around the Metro Detroit area through July. We will post a link to those on WXYZ.com. Here are a few dates you're going to want to keep and mark on your calendar. September 30th, that is when the detailed census this data will be released and actual mapping can begin at that point. Now, once the public has weighed in and the commission votes on the new proposed map, it has to publish a report and rationale for the changes by October 16th. Final maps are expected to be adopted in November and become law in December. Much more to come throughout the course of this process, which really has yet to get started. Reporting live this morning, Jen Shantz, 7 Action News. Yeah, big changes ahead. And in that initial census data, Michigan actually was only a few thousand folks away from actually holding on to the seats. So literally around 6,000 people yeah. literally has now thrown the entire legislative map up in the air.